Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master on a daily basis. Thank you for joining me as we continue the theme we began on Monday, and that is healing the wounded child within. How to recover as an adult from a dysfunctional childhood. And we're looking at a man by the name of Mephibosheth, the grandson of King Saul. So since he's the grandson of King Saul, you would think that he He's destined for greatness, for prominence. But instead of experiencing prominence, he experiences great tragedy. At the age of five, a caregiver, a nurse, was trying to rescue uh, uh, Mephibosheth. And she, as she was running, she dropped him and he landed on his legs and his, on, his, uh, on, his, on his feet and he became dysfunctional he became uh, uh, a cripple. And um, it's all because he was dropped as a child, which affected his adulthood. And we've been looking at how the things that happened to us as children, how we've been dropped. We talked about that yesterday, the ways in which we get dropped, how that affects us as adults. It happened to Mephibosheth when he was five years old. And for 30 years, he hid in a place, dysfunction on a place called Lodabar. In fact, we are told in 2 Samuel chapter 9 and verse 3, the king then asked him, is anyone still alive from the Saul's family? If so, I want to show God's kindness to them. Ziba replied, yes, one of Jonathan's son is still alive. He is crippled in both feet. Where is he? The king asked in Lodabar. We talked about several days ago that low means never. Low means never. And Debar means fertility, our, our productivity, which means that uh, Mephibosheth was in a place where he was never productive. He was in a distressed area where there was no fertility. Nothing grew in Lodabar. That's why he was hiding there, because he knew that no one wanted to be in Lodabar, so he hid where he knew nobody wanted to go. He's been in Lodabar for 25 years, and he's in Lodabar because somebody dropped him as a child, and he's hanging out in Lodabar as an adult. And many adults are in Lodabar because you got dropped as a child. Maybe you're not physically in Lodabar, and maybe you may be, but psychologically, emotionally, and in so many ways that are important, you find yourself in Lodabar. What are the signs that you are in Lodabar? Very quickly, I want you to get some of the signs that you've been dropped. You were dropped as a child and now as an adult, you are in Lodabar. You got to be honest about where you are. You got to be honest about your positionality, your location. First of all, here's some signs you're in Lodabar. You know you're in, science, you're in Lodabar when you're experiencing extreme anxiety. You're experiencing extreme, extreme anxiety. And the anxiety today that you're experiencing is because of the anxiety you had when you were a child. Nervous anxiety. Two, apathy. You have no aspirations. That's because you got dropped. So you don't believe in yourself. You were not given what you needed as a child. You were crippled as a child. Your self-esteem, your sense of self-worth, your value was crippled as a, as a child. And now you have are apathetic as an adult. Depression, depression. You, you have a mood of melancholiness in which you get constantly pushed down and you don't know where it comes from. Everything that happens as an adult is rooted in something that happened in our childhood. Listen to this, E, excessive need for love and attention. You got dropped when you was a child. So to compensate, to make, to compensate for what you did not get, you are in excessive need. You're a needy, clingy type of person that's not strong and confident on, on your own. Emotional withdrawal. You're in Lauderdale. That's where he was, hiding in Lauderdale, introverted. A few, if you, if you, don't come out. No confidence, you just emotionally withdraw. You're in low to bar. You got dropped when you were a child. A false sense of guilt. In other words, you're blaming yourself, not realizing that the reason why Mephibosheth uh, was crippled was because somebody else dropped him. Somebody else dropped him, false guilt. Put this down, fear of intimacy. I don't wanna get close to anybody because I got hurt. I got dropped when I was a child. I trusted somebody and they molested me. They took advantage of me. Fear of intimacy, low self-worth, low self-worth. The clouds of inferiority float through your mental sky because you got dropped. You're in Lodabar. Self-medication, 
which means you may use drugs or alcohol to medicate yourself, to numb yourself, to take your mind off the pain that you experienced when you were beat or abused, uh, molested, mistreated, not affirmed, not celebrated. So today, to take your mind off of that, you medicate through drugs, obsessions and compulsions. You eat too much, you, have, you, you don't have any discipline, self-destructive behavior, you do things that don't make sense and you wonder, why am I doing these things? It's Lodabar, unexplained mood changes. And finally, unpredictable anger, rage, and aggression. You have anger, rage, and aggression because when you were young, that's what you experienced from your parents. Anger, rage, and aggression. You are in Lodabar. Now listen, listen to me as I close this teaching today. Mephibosheth was dropped by somebody else and you got dropped by somebody else, which means it's not your fault. Your situation is not your fault. But if you're going to get out of Lodabar, why it's not your fault, it's your responsibility. And you can't expect the people who put you there to get you out because if they were going to get you out, they never would have put you there in the first place. And here's something that's really tragic. What do you do when the person who dropped you, hurt you, wounded you, your parent has died? What do you do when you don't have a way to express to them your rage and your anger and fix this thing? What do you do when many of us just don't deal with it? And because we don't deal with it, it's dealing with us. In fact, some of us in our minds, hear me carefully, have tried to excuse and justify and rationalize what happened to us as children as though it was legitimate. It's what's called the Stockholm Syndrome. You know what the Stockholm Syndrome is? The Stockholm Syndrome is when somebody has been kidnapped. After a while, the kidnapped person begins psychologically to start sympathizing and empathizing and identifying with their kidnappers. And many times we've been abused. And after a while, we start trying to justify and rationalize the abuse that we've experienced that our parents inflicted upon us. You will never get healed until you get angry. You will never get healed until you recognize that what happened to you was an injustice and you have a right to be angry. If you don't get it out of you, you'll take it out on you. You have a right to be angry. And tomorrow we're going to talk about why as adults, we're still are trying to justify some BS that took place when we were children that's still hurting us today. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for this word. We need it. It's a tough word, but we need it because we've been dropped and we need to get out of load of bar. Help us to be honest with ourselves and our situation. Heal us and we shall be healed. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with me again for another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, I want to send you an invitation to become a part of St. Stephen Baptist Church. Look, you can become a digital member. Just email us at newstart at ssclive.org. We will get back with you. Peace and blessings. We'll pick up on this again tomorrow. But until then, look, during COVID-19, you stay safe, stay sane. And remember that God is still in control. I'll see you tomorrow.